worshiptutorials.com. You're hanging out today with Brian and Bradford. And I asked Bradford to come over today and shoot a video with me. And we're going to title this one, Can PRS, PRS, Paul Reed Smith, P&W, Praise and Worship? Yes, it can, Brian. All right, thanks, thanks for, watching. for watching. See you next time. <laughs> so the answer is, of course, yes. Which the, the reason that the, the question is even a question is because if you live like we do sometimes on Facebook praise and worship groups, there are questions that are asked Stigmas. over and over and over it's again. It's a stigma, Brian. It is. Like, is this guitar good for praise and worship? Can this guitar do praise okay, and yeah, worship? Yes, yes. Well, there's that. There's that. Everybody's like, pick a random guitar and say, can this get, can this praise and worship? It happens regularly. And then there's another sort of, and I think it only is in certain certain subgroups. We're talking a subculture of a subculture of a subculture here. There is this stigma that praise and wor that that PRS guitars don't do praise and worship well, and or or they're, that they're dad guitars. I reject that. I reject. I mean, too. I'm a dad, so and I have I currently one. don't have a PRS. I have one. However, I don't think they're dad guitars. No, they don't look at all like. Well, dad guitar to me would be like a Telly or a Strat or a Les Paul. Yeah, that's close. But even those are awesome Even guitars. then. But we're here to tell you why PRS guitars work extremely well for praise and worship. And the point number one is, is they're very, very versatile instruments. <laughs> PRS Custom 24. Okay. So this is the original guitar Watch my that, face. Uh, yeah. This is the, and this thing is completely stock except for the fact that I used to have a DGT, which is another PRS model we'll talk about. And the DGT had these ivory buttons and I really liked it. It just looks very classy. So, but is it classy? But is it classy? That's the question. So uh, I put the ivory buttons on this guitar, otherwise it's completely stock. And this is the original guitar that Paul Reed Smith built. Oh, see, and, I didn't know that. Well, he built a few proto prototypes, but when PRS launched, it launched in 1985 with this model of guitar. Okay. And so this is like the quintessential PRS. It's also uh, their most popular model, the Custom 24. It's had a lot of iterations over the years. Uh, it's not a cheap guitar by any means. Um, Which should fit we'll into the subgroup because <laughs> the subgroup of a subgroup of a subgroup loves spending lots of money that's on guitars. True, the, that's so true. So why doesn't this fit the bill? But let's talk about versatility. And this is true of lots of PRS guitars because oh, they're, yeah. they're modern guitars. This is a two humbucker guitar with a five-way switch. And so just going over the features of the Custom 24, position one is the bridge humbucker. Position two is bridge humbucker, neck single coil. It's a okay. split coil. Uh, position three is both humbuckers. Position four is both pickups single coil, and it sounds like a Strat, Ooh. which is nice. It does. It does. I didn't know that's what it was, though. I thought it was yeah, the opposite. It's both singles. I thought it was, but yeah, okay, that's good. And position five is neck humbucker. So with a five-way blade, you can go full fat ridge humbucker, like melt people's faces off, to like a, a kind of a single coil sound. I took this guitar and I played the same phrase, very simple, clean, so you can hear the different sounds. Played the same thing on all five pickup positions so you can hear this now and see just how many sounds you can get out of this one guitar. 
they build with humbuckers will have some sort of coil split or coil tap whether it's a five-way blade like this that gets you different positions or different sounds in different positions a lot of them have where you can uh, push pull pots okay that will the dgt did that right yeah the dgt that we had that i had a while back did the push pull thing and then some of them like um i think paul's guitar is a mm -hmm. model the john mayer what's it called the super eagle Redford would know what the John Mayer PRS guitar. Well, there's two John Mayer PRS guitars. There is. There are. Uh, there's the Super Eagle, and then there's the uh, Silver, Silver Sky. Sky. But uh, the Super Eagle and some of their other guitars will have like these toggle switches. So little toggles that split. Which I would actually prefer. That would be awesome. Because then it would be le it'd be easier to get the sounds. Well, I you think. can get more. It's like the 408, for example. Yeah. You can get more options because with this one you can't do neck humbucker bridge single. But with that one, you can. Wow. So you can get more sounds out of it if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so PRS guitars are extremely versatile. And even the, the import line, like the more budget-friendly options, like the SE guitars, they will do coil splits and stuff too. And they sound really good. And so when you're playing on church, in church, praise and worship band, you know, you, like we might do like a rock type of a song and then a funk gospel yeah. R&B kind of thing right after it. And then you do like something Bethel and you need like, yeah. like the nice, you need like in between those two. Right. So you need three different sounds. And you can get them. One, one guitar. two, three. Ooh. Yeah. I think is pretty cool uh they have like they cover a lot of different styles like mm -hmm. if you look at takeaway prs mm -hmm. and look at all the other companies and yeah. look at what kind of guitars you like right. and styles you like you can find something very very similar if not almost identical right. made by prs now they're all going to look like a prs they're going to have their they're going to have their th thing their dna in their it, d right? yeah dna that's a good way to put it they're going to have that however like you could get something that covers like Gretsch territory. You need yeah. to cover Strat and Telly territory. It, like yeah. they're not going to be like exact because right. that's not their goal. Their goal is to be P 
PRS yeah. and to be do their own thing. But there's so many different things, and like I actually prefer their single cut look over a traditional. There's well, okay, so yeah, they do. This is the original PRS style, and this is like their own style. Yeah, like this this look is unique to them. But they also do a single cut, which looks like a, a Les Paul. Yeah, right. Is their take on it. And they actually, and they'll do a single cut, but that has like this, you know, sound and trim and everything. It's like a more modern, but they also have like what's called the 594 mm-hmm. single cut, which McCarty, is their, right? well, they have a McCarty and yeah, they also McCarty have a, a 594. So you're so and much. they're named after Ted McCarty, who basically developed all those guitars at Gibson, mm-hmm. was like Paul Reed Smith's mentor, oh. which is pretty cool. They'll have guitars in that vein, but they also do like the, uh, the Starla, which I don't think is in their lineup currently. I don't think so either, yeah. But I owned a Starla for a little while, an S2 Starla. Mm-hmm. That thing was really cool, very Gretsch. Gretsch ish, yeah. yeah. In like that vein. Bigsby, like really chimey. Almost like a Filter Tron. Filter Tron ish pickups. They have a guitar called the Vela, and the Vela would be more like a, I would think of it almost as like a Fender style mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, like it's it's, it's kind of like an like an app offset in a way. The it way is it's an, set up, it's a different body style for them. Yeah. But it um, it will do sort of more Fenderish type of sounds. Mm-hmm. The DGT that I had for a little while sounded you could get it. The bridge pickup when you split it sounded like a Tele, and the neck pickup when you split it sounded like a Strat. That guitar was awesome. It's insane. I didn't get along. We with could be the, here all day. I didn't get along <laughs> with the neck that well, but. Um, But yeah, well, we're talking a little bit about versatility, but like those other guitars have like the vibe of different things and PRS all at the same time. Yeah. And so they have a lot of stuff. And if you're a Strat guy, they have the Silver Sky. Yes. You're going to be happy. Which I am. (laughs) Brad is. I played one time and I was smitten. So it's very, it's very different. I've played one one time and that's all I needed. And Yes. Okay. If you so, know what that um, is, comment. <laughs> Tell us. It's yes. our thing here around yeah. here. Um, so, yeah, if you catch any of our our, uh, our pop culture references, let us know in the comments. It makes us feel good when people we'll notice happy. that we waste time watching TV and shows. And what will happen is we can have just a dialogue of pop culture references in the, in the comment feed. Okay. Yes. Um, so, yeah, they've got a lot of different models that cover a lot of different ground, both in their core line, which is this, and in their... S2 line, which is uh, US made PRS but a little less expensive. Mm-hmm. And so it's the, a tier below. Yeah, and then the SE line, which is a tier below which that. Which is the import line, which is more affordable. <laughs> five levels then because they have two above don't they yeah like well let's, like let's, Paul... so this brings us to the next point well there we which go. is like they've got a guitar for just about every budget yes so okay. yeah you've got you've this is the core line which is the original it's made in maryland in the u.s they use obviously they use a uh, pretty top shelf this is a 10 top wood yeah this is a 10 top so the back of this guitar has a little 10 on it meaning the top is extra good and they charge you for that. I bought it used, so I didn't pay for the extra. Well, I paid a little bit for the extra good, but it's just cosmetic. They actually have two tiers above this. They mm-hmm. have artist grade. They have three tiers actually. Artist grade, and then, which is more good on the top. Even the more. Look. Even more good. Then they have wood library. Wood library. Okay. Even more. And the wood library is like they do unique stuff, and then they do private reserve. That's like their custom shop. Okay. It's like you can go there and pick out the plank of wood that you want and it's of the best of the best and you're going to pay a whole lot of money for that like ten thousand dollars plus 
but that's what they do. Below the core line is the S2 line. And so if you think about Gibson Studio, like a Studio Les Paul. Okay. It's ma still made in the U.S. Um, doesn't have like as much figuring on the top. So it's, it's, it's a, a little they different They kind of hardware. do like cosmetic differences that don't really yeah. matter too much in sound well, and playability. And the, yeah, the carve is a little different. Pickups in the hardware are different too. Okay. On the S2 line. And they're, and they're cheaper. Okay. So Below if you that, want a PRS... But you don't necessarily want like the full on look. Like the core line is gonna be like a core uh, custom twenty four is like thirty three to thirty six hundred no, thirty three to forty two hundred. Okay. Depending on if you get a tin top or not. So if you want to go a little below that, <laughs> or you can buy used. They're actually really good deals on the used market. There can for be these, yeah. And then uh, yeah, S two is gonna be like twelve hundred to fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred dollars, and then the S E is the import, and so they're, they're going to be made in the Far East at various places, but they're um, all really high quality. And so the SE line is going to be like six to 800. And they'll give you, you can get a lot of the same models just on the SE line. And then they actually have an SE standard that is lower than that. It's like they don't have the maple cap on the top. I've done some research. Wow. Yeah, no and kidding. those are like four or $500. There's so, a PRS um, for everyone. So what is that, like seven like six levels? Six or seven different levels, yeah. And they do acoustics as well. guitars which is why I think they're great guitars we think they're great guitars for praise and worship or for anything is every one of them I've ever played whether it's an SE and I've owned several SEs my the first uh, PRS I owned was it like in the early 2000s was an SE oh, uh, I've seen that picture. soap yeah. bar it had P90s it had this body style it was a not a carved top flat top with P90s that thing played awesome like yeah. felt really good um, all the way up, like all their guitars, it is, you will be hard pressed to find a guitar that is built better than PRS. Yeah. It's like attention to detail, their uh, standards in manufacturing is all just, even the import stuff plays, like if you go to Guitar Center, well, if you go to Guitar Center, it's kind of a, it's not PRS's who knows, fault. Who knows how you, who knows what you're going to get. But typically if you'll pick up like a PRS and like, like say in the five or $600 range and compare it to anything else in that price range i guarantee you the prs is going to feel and play probably better yeah because they're just they're that well made and that's sort of their thing is that they are really really precise well-made guitars and this thing is just incredible to play yeah it, it is. feels amazing it is so yeah so that that's it those are the four is it four things four one things. super versatile two they have a uh models to fit all different types of player like your style Three uh, models in every price range. Four, pretty much everything that you get from PRS is is super high quality.
we thought we'd conclude this video with sort of a, a bit of a conversation. If you're hanging with us still, here's a pro tip for you. Uh, you can watch YouTube at 1.25 speed or 1.5 speed or 1.75 or do two. that. Yes, you can get through stuff a lot faster. But here's here's what I wanted to ask. Brad. This is a video podcast <laughs> <laughs> because um, I have always loved PRS guitars and I've owned a lot of them through the years. And uh, the reason that I've kind of let let them come and go is because the Custom Twenty Four was always like my dream guitar when I first bought an electric guitar when I was much younger than I am now. I um, I it was between a, a PRS SE Santana, which I don't that is still a model, but it's different, and an Epiphone Les Paul, and I bought the Epiphone. But like, I remember I would go into the shop and they'd have these on the wall, and they were just. There was like, I will never in my life be able to afford that. And I always wanted one, and particularly in this color. Mm. I love this color. Was it this whale is, blue, right? This is faded whale faded blue. Faded whale blue, mm -hmm. yes. So this is my favorite color. And if you get a really good top on it, like with the flamed maple and stuff, I just think it looks really, really cool. It does. may not be your taste, but I think it looks awesome. So I've always been into PRS. Bradford, not so much. Initially. But you have played the PRS guitars that I have owned I played through three the last of the several ones. years. So yeah. that, that would be this. the Custom 24 25th Anniversary 25th, Edition, yep. which had different pickups and had a rotary knob instead of mm -hmm. a switch, which I did not like. Yeah. So that one left. And then I had the DGT, yep. which was I like that one. That's pro that's like one of my favorite guitars in their line. Yeah. And then I and now I have this. And I do you, like and you that. played the Starla. That's that right, I, I did play the Starla. So, so you've played four. four, plus you've played pretty regularly. Played them here and there yeah. in shops. So what what are your thoughts on PRS having not been a huge like not been drawn to them initially? Yeah. But now you've played some. Well, I will say I was one of those guys who thought they were kind of dad guitarish. Ish. They're very modern. They are. And the praise and worship world leans toward vintage. It kind of does. It's good. You're right. right. It really does. And like I also had this thought that, you know, like guys in like Mark Tremonti play these or right. like guys who play heavy and they do, but I don't know, over the last several years, I will say before the that, John Mayer thing happened, stigma. Yeah. yes, before the John Mayer thing happened, my, I started to change. Yeah. I will admit. Um, now some people may find that hard to believe, but I, I, I did. But when they announced the Super Eagle, I was like, okay, this is, <laughs> this is pretty cool. Uh, because like it gets like a hollow body sounds, like big hollow body mm -hmm. sounds, without being ginormous. Right. Um, and then they went and they did the the Silver Sky with John Mayer. And I, I just love strats to begin with. Yeah. And I love John Mayer. And so, you know, Silver Sky is on my list because of that. Also, like the sound. Yeah. Anybody I've ever heard play the Silver Sky sounds very similar to John Mayer. So, like, the it's pickups. It's a 60s. Yeah, it, strand, it is. Basically. It is. Yeah. So, like, the pickups were designed to kind of get that sound, mm -hmm. um, which I love. Yeah. Um, but I've come around. I've seen them more and more. And, like, the more I've played them, like, once I got my hands on them, I was like, okay, this is completely different than, like, what, than you, what you think. what you thought it was. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what I thought. Um, but in the last several years, I've just started to appreciate guitars that play well. And I don't yeah. care what they look like. I don't care what other people think. Yeah. Um, and of course, I mean, I would I would like a guitar that I think looks great. But yeah. the more I've been playing PRS, the more I'm like, oh, wow. Like, I really, I really want one. They so good. Yeah. yeah. And so I've narrowed it down to, like, some general ideas of what I like. Like, I like this one. Yeah. But, like... This I is think not the model I would pick for you. This is... It's not the one. Like, I would totally play the junk out of it. Yeah. But there's... I, I'm still doing some research because there's so many options. They do make a lot. I, and, they, and they have made a lot in their catalog yeah. that, you can, that you can get used. Yes. Yeah. There is the the special semi hollow or something, which yeah, is yeah, like yeah. The limited edition, one. which is like the super eagle, but not for normal not people. Stupid expensive because yeah. the super eagle was like ten or twelve thousand, and, very rare. and first off ten or twelve thousand. Second off, they only made a small number, so like, like you can't yeah. even find them anyways. Really, well, that's New. why they cost so much. And like so now, because they made limited numbers, if you try to find one used, it's going to be as much, if not more, than it mm -hmm. was originally. So. Finding one used isn't going to make much sense. No. Um, but those semi hollows can be found for like uh, three to fifty eight hundred or something, depending on what version. Yeah, you that's get. expensive. Yeah, but it's still a lot. But it's got like this semi hollow sound. Now they make S twos that are semi hollow. Yes, that's which, true. Like they make a Vela that's semi hollow. 
Yeah. Which that looks like a really cool guitar. I've played one that I thought You've was pretty cool. You've played a sim, uh, semi hollow Vela? Yeah, I did. I love the Vela. Uh, I had a buddy, uh, Quentin had one. That's right. In Garner. Yeah. It's really, it, they sound awesome. They're cool guitars. Yeah. All PRSs are cool guitars. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, again, let us know in the comments what you think. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. We'll see you in the next video, and you're going to be seeing probably a lot of this guy in upcoming videos as well. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.